Hello and welcome to Out of the Dark Room on Adorama TV. I'm Ruth Medjber and joining me on the show today is fine art photographer Lisa Griffin. Lisa, thank you so much for joining me on the show. No worries, thanks for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome. So I know you're currently studying um, a BA, a degree in photography, but that's not your first degree, is it? No, it's not. What was? Well, tell us a little bit about your educational background. Okay, so when I was 18, I moved to Galway and started studying fine art and design in, in GMIT. And then um, as the year progressed, I decided that I wanted to start working in printmaking. So I was using a lot of etchings and screen prints. And um, I kind of started from there really. I was working, f I was working um, mainly through inks and stuff. And then I started using digital media and layering up. So it's all very tactile and hands-on and, you know, scraping stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. And then how did that progress into a desire to start photographing? Well, um, when I was in Galway, I started using Photoshop to edit my drawings and stuff. And then I started working digitally. So um, I was kind of creating pictures in pictures through Photoshop, then screen printing them. Wow. Um, so I was doing multiple layers on top of a screen or a couple of screens actually and d using different colors and stuff. And then I slowly started taking my own pictures and then making multiple different edits and screen printing them and st as well. And then you just realized that the pictures were kind of more fun. <laughs> <laughs> pictures are better than those screen printing yeah. stuff. I could probably just stop here yeah. and just take some pictures. A little faster. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So then you just decided, oh, I want to go and study this some more. Yeah, I think so. I took about two years out before I decided to go back to college. Like, um, this year is my first year in college, but I did an advanced entry, so I'm actually in second year. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's handy. Yeah. So. Wow, perfect. Yeah. And then, so maybe if you could Tell us a little bit about your style, because you have mm -hmm. quite a unique style of photography, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, so would you have certain narratives and stuff that runs through your imagery? Yeah, I'm very inspired by kind of fairy tales and dreams and stuff. So I use um, a lot of women in my imagery to kind of produce a kind of um, ethereal beauty type of yeah. theme throughout my images. I yeah. see a lot of that really because yeah. I mean when I was like looking through your website and through your Instagrams and stuff it's like there's a lot of ladies in here. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. I like that you carry it forward and, and things like that. Yeah. And then in terms of like your your styling and like the tonal quality and the mm -hmm. feel of your images it's yeah. very distinct. Yeah. Um, so is there anyone really that would I guess what I'm asking is like your inspirations. Is there yeah. photographers that you look up to that you draw inspiration from? Yeah, I'm really inspired by um, Brooke Shaden and Christy Mitchell and Miss Aniela. Um, they're amazing. Like their their work is completely um, fine art and beautiful, and they they have a story behind each image. And I just love how they create their pictures. And then like on the art side of it, I'm really inspired by Caravaggio and his use of lighting. Yeah. So um, when I started photography first, a lot of my photography, like it was still whimsical and fairy tale-y, but it was a little bit darker because mm. um, I was kind of shooting from dark to light. So I was purposely underexposing and then brightening them up in Photoshop and bringing in highlights. Wow. And stuff, yeah. So is that to kind of get that Caravaggio type, you know, yeah. like highlighty section? So you yeah. would underexpose. Yeah, just a little bit, not too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's and fantastic. Kind of, because uh, it kind, I felt like it kind of gave me that little bit of leeway to kind of play around with the shadows and stuff. So, yeah. That's a good tip for us then. Mm. And then. Um, you're very much a fine art photographer. Mm. I presume that's kind of that's coming from your 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 artist background yeah. and that kind of thing. Mm. Maybe could you tell us if anyone's coming to the show and they don't really know what distinguishes a fine art photograph from say you know a, an editorial piece or a, a, a picture you might see in a fashion photograph? Yeah. What would be the the main differences for you yeah. as a photographer? Well, um, for me, I'd say um, for fine art photography, I usually have a concept behind it. Um, I kind of collaborate with a makeup artist and we come up with like, okay, we're going to shoot, have a theme on water. So we'll put the model into a pool and photograph her. Or we're going to make a, or maybe even out in a lake or something, wow. which we have done a few times <laughs> in the freezing cold. Uh, <laughs> Suffer for your art. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then like we, we could work with um, landscapes and stuff and bring the model into landscapes and then we kind of have like one or two like key shots from the fine art shoot whereas if I was shooting like fashion or editorial there'd be a couple of shots and there'd be um, 
not as much, there wouldn't really be less of a concept, but um, the whole idea of it would be kind of different, you know. Be because you have to like show the product, whether yeah. they clothes or something. Yeah. So then in fine art, do you just like come up with this idea yourself and then go and create kind of thing? There's yeah. no really, no one comes to you and go, make me this by the 3rd of July kind of thing. Uh, well, for fine art, no. Um, yeah. I kind of, I it's more personal. Mm. So, um, uh, if somebody came to me and said I need a piece that looks like this and I'm like okay well let me get a team together and I'll do that yeah um, but usually for my fine art it's just kind of a few yeah. sketches a few a bit of research thrown in and then mood boards and finding somebody mood that looks and, yeah. and research is that just I mean when I do research for shoots I used to love just going to the library and yeah. sitting there with all the photo books, like in a big pile around me, and then like taking photos on my phone. And doing yeah, all that. scanning them through, putting them in a sketchbook. Oh, yeah. that's cool. I like so that. So, do you work the same kind of format? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of it's. Um, I find it the best. I I'm very bad at like keeping track of things, so I need to have everything like written down or in a book or something just so that I can make sure that I get that done. Or I really yeah. like that, or I like the lighting in that. I'm going to try and do something inspired by that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I guess everyone should really be out there taking notes and kind of yeah, yeah looking thing. at what's around you. Or even just carrying a sketchbook around with you. Like, oh, that, that person looks nice to use in that pose. I'll keep an eye on that, you know. Yeah. Oh, that lighting looks good. Okay, what time is it? So like, con oh yeah, what time is it? That's a good. It's like, oh, I love the light. Okay, it's November. It's three o'clock. Here we go. <laughs> Fantastic. Wait till next year. <laughs> now, one of the questions that I have uh, that I don't know if everyone kind of likes or not, but... Is there a career in what you do? I mean, I'm surprised. People are always really surprised when they find out that I'm a music photographer and then they're always just like, is that a job? <laughs> can, can you pay bills? But like to be a fine art photographer, you know, exclusively, does yeah. that exist? Um, it does. Does it? Yeah, I'm studying at the moment, so I'm, yeah. I'm working on it. You don't it. have the pressures of that yeah. so far. <laughs> Give me three more years and then I'll do it. Yeah, but when you graduate though, will there be, is there jobs for a fine art yeah, photographer? Yeah, there is jobs for kind of every line of photography really. You just kind of have to find the right people that are willing to invest in it, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's a big, I mean, it's the art world as well, and it's just yeah. really tricky to break into, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess as well, if you supplement yourself with like those beautiful headshots that you do and 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 then fashion work as well I suppose it'll all come together. The one piece of work that I absolutely adore that you shot was the the scene set in Iceland. Yeah. I adore those because I think they're so powerful and maybe that's the landscape or maybe that's your models or maybe mm. that's your use of light but everything came together and I think it's just it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about that whole story, how, yeah. it, how it came to be and what you did on site. Yeah, so I was on um, a kind of workshop photo shoot experience with um, a really great photographer, Miss Aniela, and um, they kind of planned the production. So our job was to go over to Iceland and then they had everything ready. So they had brought over these huge costumes and suitcases of everything that you could desire for a photo shoot. And um, they showed us how, to, how a production would work. Do you know, so they had like their team Arctic Advance driving us around yeah. and they had um, they just they had all the models ready, they had the makeup artists, the hairstylist and they, they, they were like, OK, so this is what we do. Yeah. Um, when you're on a big production. And so you, you go, go to off see and take your own pictures and see how like how you're inspired by the landscape and outfits. That's fantastic. Because, I mean, I've always seen photographers, like, like really famous photographers advertising, I'm doing a workshop. But the thing that turns me off is that it's it's mega bucks, right? Yeah. It's a huge Pretty amount expensive. of money. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're a student mm. as well. Yeah. Did you think it was worth it? I did. Yeah, yeah, it was. Like, the experience that I took away from the workshops that I've gone to is something that you wouldn't really learn in college. Yeah. Um, I suppose if you got an apprenticeship with a photographer, you kind of slowly learn that, but it, it's just a lot of information just crammed into a week. So when you're there in Iceland, is there many other people on the workshop? I mean, is there, is there a chance that they're getting the same shots as you? Um, well, from what I've seen, there was about 10 or 12 other people okay. with us. Um, and none of our pictures look the same. Everybody, like, there were people coming from, like, a wedding photography background. Wow. Like, portraiture, landscape, do you know? So everybody was just kind of, every, everybody's style was completely different, and I think that's what 
makes everybody's work look different. You know? That's cool. Yeah, it's no cool. two shots are the same and no two edits are the same. So yeah. everybody kind of got their own little, like it was a week long thing. So everybody, yeah. So everybody <laughs> got their, like, like they loved more, one shoot more than another shoot, you know, so. What were you kind of looking for then? When you go into a landscape to convey I suppose your style and your narrative. Yeah. What kind of stuff do you look for to get that really dreamy ethereal effect? Yeah, I love dramatic backdrops. So Iceland was the place. Perfect. It was like Mars or something, you know. Brilliant, so, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I love the place. But yeah. You were saying that the Arctic people took you out as well. Yeah. They took me out. I didn't see what you saw. <laughs> you just have the eye for seeing all this epic landscapes and whatever you need to see. I just saw, oh, like, it's a pretty waterfall. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. So you're looking for for big landscapes? Yeah, pretty much. Like, a, like it, it's kind of a running theme in my work. Like, I've shot in Connemara and Galway mm. and Kerry and Every, you know, and I always kind of look, if I'm shooting outdoors, I need to have something dramatic in the shot or else it's just another portrait outside. Okay. You know, so I would, um, like, I would, I, my model is obviously the subject in the image, but I like to have her in a huge, like, environment, like, yeah. kind of reacting to it. Wow. Yeah. So maybe it is like you've got like a dual lead. It's like the model and the landscape working mm. together. Yeah. And then tell me about your, your model selection. Mm -hmm. So when you're booking, I know you didn't get to book the Icelandic models, but mm. for when you're booking models for like Connemara or wherever else that you're shooting around Ireland, what do you look for in a model? Um, I like very unusual faces. So not like aesthetically beautiful, but they're, they are beautiful yeah. at the same time, do you know? So, um, it would be like, oh, I just love natural beauty, really. Like, I, I, I would go for somebody that looks gorgeous without makeup, and then I'd use my makeup artist and we'd slap a whole load of makeup on yeah. and see how it looks. <laughs> and by makeup, I mean paint or something like that. Really? Not really kind of like eyeliner, eyelashes and stuff. It's more um, my makeup artist, she does a lot with textures. So, like, paint the face and make it look like a painting. So it kind of adds to the... Yeah, Shots. the whole painting thing really comes through, even yeah. with your choice of models. So if, if you wouldn't mind sticking with me, mm -hmm. I'd love to come back in the next episode and talk to you more about then the post-production that you yep. do on the imagery, because that seems like such a massive thing. Yep. And then also we're going to talk about all your lighting and all your little tricks and your gear that you yep. use. Is that cool? Yeah, that's great. Cool. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> Thank Cheers. You. Well, that's all we have time for this show. Join me again, where I'll be chatting to Lisa all about her production techniques. If you'd like to brush up on your own photography skills, check out the Adorama Learning Center. If you want to watch more videos, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon.